Welcome to Barsha, 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 episode 45 with artist advocate Cynthia Thompson. Thank you. Cynthia, I am going to sing you a song that I sing for everyone, but since I'm in a hotel room, I'm just going to sing it to you a cappella. I mean, not a cappella, but with my pre, uh, my pre recorded piano track. Are you ready? Yes. Thank you. Where do you go on Mondays when you want to have fun? Where can you go on Mondays when your day is done? Well, Fireside Chat is where it's at. Our guests are all the best. Her brother's name is Tonkson. I couldn't find a rhyme with Tonkson. So we'll talk about Wesley. Here's Cynthia Tonkson. Help me in welcoming Cynthia Tonkson. Okay, there we go. Now you have a welcome. Okay, I want to tell you why Cynthia is so special to me and her mission in life is so important. That's what I want to do. Cynthia Thompson is uh, the guardian and the advocate, the artist's advocate for the legacy of her late brother, Hong Kong Inc. artist Wesley Thompson. Uh, I'm, I don't even want to start talking about who her brother is and was because he's such an important art figure. Cynthia, thank you for being here and bearing through with our technical difficulties. I just flew into a hotel in Minneapolis, but I did not want to miss the show with you. Can you tell us about yourself and your advocacy for your late brother and how amazing he is? And then I'll show some pictures. Oh, okay, great. Thank you, Deborah, to have me on the show. Yes. Um, my late brother, Wesley, in a way, he was a hidden artist or forgotten artist. You know, he had um, schizophrenia, diagnosed at age uh, 15. He started painting when he was 17 and he never stopped. And he always, uh, always wanted to do better to elevate his art to a higher level, uh, always pushing boundary, uh, always experimented to try to find his own voice. He was only active showing his work for 10 years, from 1985 to 1995. And then he became more withdrawn, didn't really show the work, and nobody knew kind of what he did uh, the later part of his life. You know, he specialized in splashing painting. These are all, he used non-brush te technique to um, do his landscape painting. He also did plant subjects as well. And later on, he progressed and literally abandoned the brush and painted with his fingers and nails. And these were his six feet, eight foot painting, and but nobody knew about that. So when he passed away, he left all this artwork that I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what I'm going to do with them. But when I realized that in the Hong Kong art community, um, some people still remember my brother, uh, but they had no idea how he progressed as an artist. I just felt that it was really important to show at least the Hong Kong art community what he did, how he progressed as an artist. And then when I find out from the art experts, the scholars um, and art historians, um, how great how amazing his finger paintings were. And it's something that they had never seen before. Then I had decided that I had to advocate for his art to put his art into the light and to share. And I think it's really important because he has been left out of the narrative of the Chinese contemporary art. And really I wanted to put him back in his right place to, to share the work and um, to let people know about him, that Hong Kong has produced such artists. Because oh. according to a lot of these experts, he really was an important 20th century artist. So Can that's why- you believe I, that? I, that is- I Decided to do it. Wait, now I have so many questions, so many questions. I'm putting his um, website uh, in the, so people can actually look at what we're talking about. Uh, because it is so incredible. And I want to talk about the stigma of mental illness and genius. I mean, the guy was schizophrenic and a genius. 
And I I read so much about him that he he um I think he said that he was connecting with the immortal uh, unity. Can you talk about the immortal unity a little uh, before he painted? Yes, he always now he always now his his paintings are all very spiritual, and early on he realized the importance of the art and religion or art and spirituality, and in Chinese art in particular, Zen Buddhism. So he really went on that path um, to you know to elevate himself. He believed in order to put out good works, you have to elevate yourself from within first um, to like to a higher consciousness in order to produce the good work. And he believed that's what you know he meant by painting from the heart. So um, so he always tried to get to a state with his painting, with his landscape painting to this Chinese philosophy that the unity between men and heaven, like oneness with men in heaven. And he he said these splashing painting or his finger painting later on, um, that's where the he, he wants to get into that state. And so if you look at his um, landscape painting, it's very ethereal, it's, it's, it's heaven. It's like- I, I would like to look at his, which one of these do you want me to click on? Because they're you, all- You know, like, like the color one with the, with the orange. One? With the orange light, with the orange light. Yes. Um, yes, what? this one. Oh yeah. my God. Uh, as you can see, it's very ethereal. It's kind of oh. like, kind of like it's not of this world. He has said that he, all his landscape painting, he's not depicting this world. It's really depicting another world, the other it's world. Like, yeah, it's like a landscape from another world. Now, if I, if I zoom not, in, yes. you can see, it. did he paint that with his fingers? No, this uh, this series is called uh, Mountains of Heavens, and okay. he did this without non-brush technique, not with his fingers and nails, but oh, anything man. that he could think of without um, the brush. So this net-like um, texture, as you can see it from the mountains, yes. uh, it really has to do with just how the color he, he how he controlled the color flow, and somebody did ask him how he particular uh you know come up with this texture and he you know he's always very paranoid about giving out his techniques so he never really gave details so he just said that by understanding and maintaining control of the colors you can achieve this okay so, now now see his signature right there can you yeah. tell us he used to sign it as not his name ah this one is his name. Later oh, on, with his, his name. famous painting, he signed it with his sovereign. But this one is with his name. It has his age on it. He would say right. the age and then his name. But I want to talk about the, the, the light of that painting. Of that painting? Okay, you know, great. You know the light that come out? So, you know, you know, because he had this illness all these years, and painting, in a way, kind of liber uh, liberate him. And he's the happiest when he's painting. It's a time where he can, like, forget his troubles. Right. And he described that, number one, these are, like, he's picturing, uh, like, scenes from heaven. These are, he's depicting the heavenly domain. But he right. said that often the emergence of bright light from apparent darkness of his painting reflects the journey of his personal experience and struggle. Oh. Yes. That is so beautiful. And you know, I was thinking about it um, when I was looking through all his, well, that's your picture. But when I was looking through, you know, all of his pictures, even the calligraphy, oh, you know, so. uh, can we, is this the one he did with his fingernails? Because I want to get one that he did with his fingernails at the end of his. No, this is not, uh, this is also, again, on brush technique, but you see, this is non brush technique also, really ink rubbing techniques and splashing and other methods, but it will, you know, but you, you can see all the details. The details but, are unbelievable. Unbelievable, yeah, yeah. And you can see the depth, the texture, it really draws you in. It may, this, you can look at it as a detail, or you think it may be a detail, or you, it could be a far away shot. So it's two different perspectives. Okay, I want to go back and ask you some questions before we look at some other stuff. First thing I want to ask you is, you know, he did he did paint and use these kind of spiritual names, you know, that that you said he had that he would use. I'm uh, not Wesley Thompson, right? So when 
it seemed like when, from the minute he came on the planet, he kind of had a sense of himself as an artist. When was the earliest that people knew, oh my God, like how old was he when you when he started drawing and painting or whatever? Now, this is the interesting part. As kids in grade school, I don't think he could draw. I, I was considered the artistic one. I used to do his art homework for him. It's really strange. But then when he decided to take up painting at 17, he could paint. He just could I, paint. Yeah, so. I have a theory about schizophrenia. I really believe they're I, in I, It people, has something to do with that. I feel it is like an enlightened state. That 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 is, but that's a personal feeling. You lived with him, so now did you grow up together with him, and then you left uh, Hong Kong? You both grew up in Hong Kong, right? Both grew up in Hong Kong, but I left quite early. I left at the age of uh, fifteen myself to go to boarding school in England, and then come here to the United States for college. And I would just go home for for holidays, for the major holidays. Right. So yes. Okay. So. Here's what happened. Do you believe that you only got seriously interested in his art after he passed away? Yes. And what was that? Was it, did you regret, oh my God, I didn't get closer to my brother? Yes. Now, now that I, you know, I knew he was ca ca talented and yes. the splashing beautiful artwork is easy to understand, easy to see, it's beautiful. Right. His finger painting, landscape, it's a little deeper. You really take a lot of, you know, um, you know, you really need to understand him kind of in order to understand painting. So to be honest, I wasn't really that close to him when he was alive because he was very difficult to live with, a very difficult relationship with my parents and also with me. So I will focus on that. And yes, uh, I talked to him a little bit about the art, but he saw that I didn't really understand his art. So after a while, he really kind of like gave up on me, kind of like, oh, you wouldn't understand anyway, literally oh, like that. So when he passed away and I got into the art, I really had to do a lot of research. And thank God he left a lot of notes. He, he would write notes to remind himself. These are his personal, very, very personal notes. These are like as if he was talking to himself or remind himself. And sometimes he talk about the art. And I really, I kept the ones that he talked about the art and I actually have to really, you know, go through those notes in order to know the thinking behind his art. Because that was the one thing I really regret that I didn't have a chance to ask him. Well, one of the things that um, you sent me and I looked at it on YouTube yeah. is the Berkeley Art Museum yeah. talking about what an important artist he was. I mean, if you didn't advocate for him, I don't know who would have known about him. Is that true? Had he had exhibits before that? He, he had from 19, 1985 to 1995. No, but, but he never was at like Hong Kong, you know, like there's, I mean, he's like a really important artist. But he was a hidden artist. Nobody he was a hidden him. artist. And forgotten artist. That's why I had to advocate for him and bring his work to light. So, okay. yes, otherwise, I, I, I didn't know either until I started, you know, um, contacting museums and, you know, about collecting his work and talking to curators and um, art historians and, um, you know, our scholars. And that's where I learned about how, you know, why his work is unique, why it's important. This is a splashing work, too, yes. Now, what is splashing ink technique? Splashing is literally splashing ink onto a piece of paper. But how does, he, how does he get the detail? Yeah, well, that's just it. And then it's really in the control of tilting, tilting the, the board to let the ink flow a certain way. And he also used ink rubbing and there's ink staining. And I don't know what else, what other techniques. Yeah. Because he's getting dimension. He's getting yes. dimension. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yes, and he, used, it, he used colors to do that. And also. And look at the background. Yes. Looks like it's somewhere amorphously far behind. And yes. this is the detail in the front. Yes, yes. These oh are all my brush technique. But we don't really know how he achieved it because he was extremely secretive about the technique. I only know very general. But are other artists fascinated with this, that who do this kind of work? Do they say, 
Yeah, there are other artists who do splashing or you know or, or this type of work too. But um, I I really haven't seen too many that is to this degree. He really highly developed it. I mean, first of all, who who I, who yeah, does not to this degree? Pink mountains. I mean, traditional Chinese kind of landscapes don't have these kinds of colors, right? Not so as bright color. Yeah, they are more muted color. But however. If you notice the different textures in there, you know, maybe yes. the brown color. He, these, a lot of these are traditional Chinese brushstroke technique. He's able to duplicate them with non-brush method. And same oh thing with his, uh, with his finger and nails later on. Oh, he did but, this with his finger later? Wait, we got to see one with the fingernails. How do we find black that? black and white ones. Um, okay. Like the, which, this oh, one? Like, 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 like this series of uh, uh, panels of black and white paintings up there. Okay. okay, so he did these with his fingers? Fingers and nails, yes. And I think this... if you if you don't know, you might not notice they were done by fingers and nails. You might think that they're done by a brush. But once you know and you look at the painting closely, you can really trace the, the movement of the fingers. And you can see like the nail where he might apply the nail. So this is kind of where he lives inside you, the observer, because the observer can follow how he did this with his bare hands. Yes. Yes. Okay. So. If anybody, if anybody needs to, I got to talk to you a little bit, then I'm going to show more because this blows me away. You know, why I have this show is I want to highlight people who people might not know behind the scenes that are really doing great things for somebody to have this kind of passion for, for their brother. After he was schizophrenic, he passes away and you're advocating your whole life is dedicated to his work. He's alive inside you. It is. Just, it's so beautiful. I, I can't. Yeah. Everybody, it's thank you for clapping. It's Wesley Tongson, Wesley, W E S L E Y, Tongson, T O N G S O N dot org is his website. But go on Instagram, it's Wesley Tongson on Instagram, and you'll see all these beautiful. So, here I have a few questions, and this has to do with your relationship to him. Um, is there any, are there any other children? No. Two of us. Okay, and are you were you older? older yes. By two years, yes. By two years. Okay. Did your parents realize? It must have been so hard. Look, I've got a schizoaffective sister in law, so I know what it does to a family too. Could they see behind beyond that? My God, my son's an artist. They they knew that he was very talented as an artist. We all kind of knew, but we didn't know the depth of it. Uh -huh. Until I start to research more. My, my parents, I mean, I tell my parents, but they are very advanced age at the moment, right now. They're like 101 and 99. So, uh, so, so, but they know that he was talented. We knew he was talented, but not to this degree. He always said that he's a master to us. And we're like, yeah, right. Maybe you were like, That's you know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, if somebody says that, then you're just like, um, you know, we normally would poo-poo it, but yeah. he was, he was yeah. a master. That's what we did. We said, yeah, well, I don't know about whether you're a master or not. I don't think, I'm not sure about that. But sure enough, I guess he, he, he was. <laughs> um, I have to show you this one thing that I love, the way they describe him in the museum at the Berkeley. There's a YouTube video that I kind of want to just show um, only because they really describe, I just want to show the first part of it. It's okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. Cause okay. It just really blew me away. And I, I want people to understand how important he is. So this is from spiritual mountains. Oh my God. Wesley's work is 
enchanting in a way, confusing, challenging, and it reflects his personality, that he was a very complicated and complex individual. He was very much under-recognized during his lifetime. And part of the reason for doing this exhibition here at the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive was to bring to light of this extraordinary talented artist who was very bold and very willing to experiment. He was diagnosed as a schizophrenic fairly early on in his life, in his teens, and that certainly had an impact on his work. One of the things that I find really intriguing is his sense of motion within his paintings. The yes! Paint has swirls and lines that are not really descriptive, but are just essence of, an essence of a tree, an essence of a mountain, an essence of a cloud. He was able to directly create an energy that's palpable to the public. The exhibition is organized in four main parts. There you are! Which include landscape, which is one of Wesley's Look at that! subjects. And Holy! And both splash ink and color paintings, finger paintings, and brush paintings of landscape, which are not intended to be landscapes of any real place, but rather landscapes of the mind, of images that came out of his own creativity and his own imagination. The second section of the Okay, I'm stopping with now the because I want to talk. Can we please have applause for that? That is, I mean, when I say, when I... That, by the way, that, uh, that the talking, the, the one talking, uh, is the, is the curator of the, um, Asian art curator of the museum who curated the show. Yeah. Okay. So that's Berkeley Art Museum. And we understand that's America. But if you're recognized in your own country, he also was recognized, wasn't he in like the Hong Kong art? What, what, what was it, an art museum or a um, well, Hong um, Kong Art Center? No, okay. Uh, he, his work is in museums in Hong Kong, in the Hong Kong Museum of Art the M plus Museum of Visual Culture, and um, and also the Hong Academic uh, Museum, the Hong Kong U uh, Art Gallery and Museum, yes. Uh, the Hong Kong Art Center was where I first did the exhibition for him after he passed away. Wow. So did they have you speak? Did they have you? I mean, everyone must be curious about him because did he show up at his exhibits and give speeches when he was there or go to receptions? Or was that not a thing he did before? Uh, he didn't really talk. Oh, you mean when he was doing his exhibition? Yes. He actually, yeah. Um, he he did talk a little bit. He, he didn't get up and talk to an audience like that. Uh, Sometimes he talked about his work. So I actually do have one and only, one and only, one video of his 1992 exhibition where he talked about his work. Yes, only and one. You, you know, I read a great, I read your blog. Everybody should go to your blog. I forgot how you get to it, but it's, I believe it's on the um, website. It, Medium is on the Medium platform. It's on the, the website if you follow and it's, you can get to it. It's the Medium yes. Okay, yeah. so yeah, go to wesleytongson.org and then it'll say the blog, right? Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You follow, it will, yeah. So let me, t let me tell you what I loved about your blog. I followed it all in order. And some of the things you told, and I don't really know how to talk about this, but we've been talking about these pieces as paintings, but it's under the umbrella of calligraphy, isn't it? On yeah. some is really uh, the foundation, the basis of Chinese really painting brushstroke. I think if you cannot do good calligraphy, I don't think you can do brushstroke. It really is the foundation. So everybody a lot of times learn calligraphy first. So and, yes, yeah. so it is really a practice. It's brushstroke practice. And it's also for, for Wesley, it's a spiritual practice as well. She, uh, we're getting Stephen Henry is saying in the question and answer section. And by the way, anybody can ask questions, even in the question and A or come on stage. Um, Stephen Henry saying beautiful pieces in capital letters. Thank you so much for sharing his legacy with us. It does mean something when you do this, when a person is, is gone. Um, but I did want to talk about, so calligraphy, brush stroke. Then um, he was really taken with Picasso's cubism. How, how did, was he influenced by Picasso? 
Oh, that's pretty interesting. He um, three years after he started painting, he was in Toronto to um, attend the um, college Ontario College of Art there. So that was the first time he got exposed to Western style painting and really discovered Picasso. He really um, Picasso's one of two favorite artists. You know, favorite artists. The other one is a Chinese master painter specialized in special ink called Zhang Danqian. Now, what is interesting is, and I think this is where the connection is, Zhang Danqian really gained an international audience and actually influenced Western painters as well when he traveled to Europe, I think, I think South America, and, and definitely California in the United States. Right. And he was friends with Picasso. Picasso admired Zhang Danqian's splashing work. Yeah, so they were friends. So... I think maybe, so I think it's not surprising that Wesley kind of found Picasso, but he was fascinated uh, with cubism, um, the way that it brought volume and texture to, to the work, that illusion of space. So that's why you've noticed Wesley's painting is always that three-dimensional aspect of it. It was very important to him to always have that three-dimensional aspect. And, um, and he, and he mentioned and he, two teachers yeah. that he studied yeah. with that were very important yeah. to him. Who are the two? Yeah, uh, the first one uh, was in Toronto, uh, Gu Qing Yao. Yao. She is also a, a female, very accomplished female uh, painter, traditional Chinese painter as well. And then uh, when he went back to Hong Kong, uh, Wesley studied under her student, called Harold Wong, against another well-known, well-respected painter, collector, connoisseur. Uh, so he really learned very, very good foundation of Chinese brushstroke technique for, the, for the both of them. But then there's another third teacher that he actually took a course with, and is a Taiwanese artist, uh, 20th century artist, Lao Guachong. And um, he's like, you know, he's, he's, he's this splashing uh, painter, he's a master painter, was he took a course from him. And from the course, he encouraged his student to experiment with different, um, tech, you know, different things, different things to create paintings without using a brush. So I think he actually learned the, probably the basics of non-brush techniques from uh, Master Lao Kuo Chong. And then he just developed an experiment on his own after that. Can you please, this says, this is, it says untitled work from 1997, done without a brush. Yes, done without a brush, done without a brush. It's, uh, I think this is, I, I, he had quite a series of these and they may be his practice work. It's, it's about the tonality of this work. And, um, you know, uh, I don't know what, what they are, mountains? Are they mountains? Are they not mountains? Yeah, look at this. Look at even so this. This is a uh, this is a finger painting, but this is part of a finger painting. Oh um, my God! I don't really oh, understand. Yeah. You know, he. What is this? Bamboo. Bamboo is what he learned first at the very beginning. Now, Wait bamboo. A minute. This again, oh, the dimension. Bamboo. Yes, the bamboo is very important. This is like the foundation. It's, it's just like calligraphy as well. I mean, uh, basically, a lot of time paintings kind of stem from, in a way, I don't know what I'm saying, right, from calligraphy, you know, calligraphy, like yeah. calligraphy into painting. So bamboo is, is uh, you know, is one if you, you know, you, you learn like bamboo first because but it's all about the... Was 17, I'm sorry I keep interrupting. I'm just so overwhelmed. So at 17, he was doing these. He's and then this. look oh, at yeah. this. This is this is a finger painting. This is six feet finger, finger painting. Oh my it's god! It's the pine, and it's very very um the fatality of it, very vital, very the uh, energy of it is just incredible. Yeah, these, and these, if you look at the yes, the, the pine needle, they're like fireworks. Like fireworks, yes. yes. Now we are just looking at it from a photo. Can you imagine standing in front of it? You can yeah, really I, feel. You can really feel that. Oh, I feel it. I feel it definitely. Look at all these two. These are. But I want to get to the. Look at the way this kid is looking. <laughs> this is a collector uh, office, I guess. Uh, he, he sent me this photo after he put it up on the wall. This is a bamboo that um, he did with fingers and nails, and that that's his little daughter. Like, yes, yeah, his, his little children love okay, art. Okay, I need to say something about fingers and nails. So there's one story on your blog yeah. where you said you went out to dinner with him yeah. and his nails and fingers were dis like all like nails, you know, like black. And you said, why didn't you wash your hands? What's wrong with you? you got to clean your nails. And 
he wouldn't even tell you then I'm painting with my fingers. Uh, I think that that he did paint. He, that was the time I oh, found that out. When he, he told, he that told was when I found out. He didn't voluntarily told me when I when I press when I keep like getting really upset with him and t t asking him why are you not cleaning your hands before you came out to dinner? And it was at a nice. It was this buffet too, mind you, buffet where you had to go out to get food. So I was like, oh my God, you know, all black fingers. And he said to me, um, I no longer can clean my fingers. They are permanently stained because I no longer use the brush to paint. And at the time I was like, huh? But keep a secret. You cannot tell anybody. You have to promise to keep a secret. You know, he's he very- said that? Yeah, because he's paranoid. He's paranoid that people oh. might steal his technique. So I'm thinking in my head, finger painting you're using the finger what kind of paintings are these i mean i'm trying to envision what these paintings could be and i couldn't and if i was like what to keep a secret i mean people can't tell how how can they not tell how can they not tell that you're not using a brush and he told me no they can't tell and it kind of puzzles so, me wait 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 so what you're trying to tell me is he was trying to trick people i mean he was saying uh oh. And not no, trick them, but I mean, he was saying this is like he was following ancient painters who did this, right? Who didn't paint with brushes. Now, there are actually only two in history, Chinese history, <laughs> that, that use fingers to paint. Um, I think he, he progressed into finger painting. Was he never explained to me why, because I never really pushed further or asked further. Right. But I think he always explored on brush techniques. So now, but there's always that brush in between you and that piece of paper. So right. now he's taking away that the one thing that, that stood in between him and his creation, him and his paper, that he can totally transfer his whole energy his, onto the piece of paper. So it, it, that's why these paintings are really powerful, energetic, and extremely expressive. And that woman said, it, it, that woman said, See, people are clapping. They understand what this is. This is like I'm, I'm happy they understand. Was oh. really very ups, you know, was very sad that people did not understand his work. But oh my yeah. god! And you know, she said she said one thing that I love, which she said, "These are the essence of mountains. This is the essence of the sky." Yeah, that's what he captured. Yes, you know, and and that's for me what. And then it's almost like. You go inside them. It's like going in his mind. You know, the cl the closer up you get, it's it, in a way, you know, like pointillism in that way, but it's nothing like pointillism. But you're getting so close that you're going inside his mind because he had to get very small to get that detailed. I mean, you know what I mean? I can't take it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't even know how he did it. He, you know, he, he did this painting, you know, on, on, a, paper, on, a, on a table. I really don't know how he likes where he starts the composition and all that, but how he paints, he always said that the image will come to him. It, there's no like pre planning, there's no draft or sketch or anything. Everything just came to him flowing from a world beyond. And when he gets his vision, he had to put it down on paper. Like, I really do want to go back to this one painting that really gets oh. me. And I want to tell you why. Um, there's also an essence that someone, I feel this, I, it's like a Rorschach painting in some ways because I don't know if these are people holding hands. What's happening over here? They're branches, I understand. They're but branches. I, I think they're branches, <laughs> supposed to be. So this is called Mountains of Heaven series. Part oh, of yeah, because yeah, that's how they describe them. Yeah, these are mountains. So I if, I get really, if I get really close, look what you can see. You can see. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like letting, you can see that's like letting the ink flow. So really is in the control of the ink. Uh, he, he really has developed this technique. He said that it has to do with the pressure, how he applied the ink onto the canvas, onto the paper or the board. And then he will shake the board, the paper or the board. And it's oh, really depending yeah. on the pressure. So it is something he, it took years for him to develop. It's strictly his own but technique. You see the way it gets more blurry on the edges, like, like a photo in a way. Like what ah. he's, it's ah. so... It's so real, but so like, I yes. can't, I mean, anyone whose mind works like this for me is a genius. I don't give, I don't care what anyone says. And this evokes, this evokes such, uh, I have to tell you, it really makes me like emotional. I, 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 I'm, yeah, his work can. 
actually. It's, yeah. It's you know, painting for him, I think his painting practice, in a way, it, it helps him to manage his struggles. What is this? Moves. Oh, this was the um, <laughs> exhibition after he passed away that I kind of organized, I put together. And uh, my... my um, <laughs> My designer friend um, did the uh, did all the like the branding of the exhibition, the wow. graphic, everything, and she made a model. This is the model of the That's exhibit. Great. Part of it, part of part of the exhibit. Okay, so, now here's the thing about the spiritual part of it. Yes. When he started signing his paintings, Mountain Taoist. Did he just come out? He didn't tell you to refer to him that way. He just said, "My now my signature will not be my name. It will." No, it, he, didn't, he didn't explain all that. I suddenly found out that hey, what what is that? How come there's no Wesley Thompson? You know, in Chinese, how come he signed his name? How come this this now signature become Mountain Dowders? And I discover that he started doing that from two thousand nine. Till up till he passed away. So 2009 is at the point where he he actually abandoned the brush to totally paint with his fingers and nails. So I I I only can suspect. I really don't know what it what it means exactly. But in so, your in your blog, you said yes. Why are you not painting with color anymore? Yes. And 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 you and you asked him and. He said, he yeah. even knew it. He said, my color's going to come back, but right now that's not where I'm at. Yeah, you know, he was doing those colorful uh, landscapes that you were showing. Yeah. So about 2004, he stopped. Suddenly he changed gear. Suddenly the work that he was uh, showing me after that was all pretty much very black, like peaks of like a mountain might show up. So basically all black kind of block light. And I really didn't understand it. I was like, oh. And I was really panicked for him because all these years, your technique of all these colors, you mean that's the end of it? Like, what a waste. And he said to me not to worry. He said, right now, I cannot break through further. I cannot go further. In order for me to go further, I have to abandon what I'm doing and totally switch gear and go back to the you know monochrome, go back to the brush. And then maybe I can move forward because he's always trying to find um, breakthrough and to find his own voice. So, but then he said to me, he knew it. He said to me, but don't worry, the color will come back. But when the color comes back, it will be on a whole different level. And oh he, my was God. Right. he was right. At the very end, you showed a finger painting with color on it. And, yes. and literally months before, maybe not even a year, months before he passed away, he added color back. And these are really amazing, amazing Wait work. a minute. Wait a minute. What is this? This is not his. Oh, <laughs> this is God. Not, this I is got so show. scared. That's Art Basil. Here. Yeah, that's his. Yes. <laughs> that's his work. Th these are not his. Yeah, these are his splashing landscape. You know, I can't, I mean, as I flip through these, tell me if you need me to stop at something because- I, I want to show the color finger. Oh, the, co the which one? The, there's a co the color finger painting. Um, Where is it? Whoa, 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 whoa. There, there is, can you scroll through? There's one that you can see the black and white and the color is the landscape, vertical. Okay, um, it's not this one. No, I think, oh, there it is. Right there in the oh middle. Oh my right god! There, right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh now, my! So now, so the painting, the color painting on the right, he added the color back on. That was at the very end of his life. Actually, he was at the cusp of something new, adding color back on at that point when he passed away. So what? now, then I looked through his photos. He he did not document his work, you know, document document, but he he document by photograph. So he photographed his work, and I was looking through his photo album, and I found. This I was like, wait a minute, isn't that the same as the color painting before the color? So I kind of spotted that. Then I realized he took a picture of the be the before, so to speak. And then yeah. I had thought, oh, maybe he just you know after he finished the work, he just picked paintings to put color back on. But I was corrected by my good friend, art historian Catherine Mosley, that but look no, 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 this. this could be anything. Yeah. But he actually kept to the um, Chinese painting tradition that you all you complete the work in the monochrome and then you get you add color on. Okay. So this, 
So this is a completed work in black and white. And then he added the color. I don't even know where to start. I mean, this page, please go to this Instagram page. Look at him. He's amazing. There you are. Where was this taken? Oh, this is in the Chinese Cultural Center. Uh, yes, uh, they, they did an exhibition of his. And it was, uh, this was the occasion where they honored my brother, the, the Fusionary uh, Artist Award. I was so honored. Oh, my and, God. Uh, yeah, so it, that was his painting behind me. And standing next to me is my now my good friend, Catherine Mosley. She was the um, curator who curated his first exhibition. I had met her um, uh, after Wesley passed away, and she has been a tremendous guidance in my journey. Okay. I, I want to ask you something. And yes. First of all, people are clapping because they... I'm telling you, people are going crazy. I can, I know my friends and there's some friends here. Okay. I want to ask you a personal question. And okay. if it's too much, just say no. Okay. Do you think when he didn't have color, I mean, with our family um, schizo affective person, sometimes the medication gets a little off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did he struggle with medication issues during his life? Oh, yes. Every day was a struggle for him. Definitely medication because uh, he it was managing his mood quite okay while he was taking the injection, I think twice a month. But I think the medication was quite strong. So he didn't like it because there's a lot of side effect, but he felt that it curbed his creativity. That was the ma a major part of it. Mm -hmm. And then somehow he convinced the doctor to be off the injection. And ever since that, uh, his medication by orally is always marginal. So he became even more difficult to deal with because it's always marginal. And he might forget his meds. And every time I, we suggest, oh, did you forget to take your meds? He would get really upset. Of course. That's what happens. I'm very familiar with this. Yes. Because I, yeah. yeah. And, but, you know, it's interesting because it still came through when he meditated. I mean... It doesn't matter, you know, it shows him meditating. And then when he changed his name to, he didn't change his, you know, like another personality. He said, no, this is the Mountain Taoist. Here, here are the paintings from the Mountain Taoist. I think it really signified the, the level he was at, the spiritual level he was at. With his and with himself, I think that's what it meant. You know, the mountain, you know, he always painted landscape, but Taoist, you know, is more the spiritual part. I'm only guessing. You know, uh, you stay you. in your blog. Uh, uh, ooh, I just, uh, sorry about that. You say in your blog, I wrote a couple of things down that I think, first of all, people should read your blog because one of the things you say is, I'm not an artist. I am just conveying my brother's uh, uh, spirit and mind the best that I can because he was so brilliant. Yeah, see, Stephen, Stephen thank you for that. And so... Your one of your blogs is called Slow Dancing with Art. Yes. This was during the exhibition at the Chinese Cultural Center in San Francisco. And they asked this um, per, uh, the person uh, come in to do a, a, a dance or movement session by looking at the painting. And they will look at this and I say, wow. What? And that was his, the first time he, he did this, the first time. He, he, you know, he had been thinking about doing it, but that was the first time he did it. And what perfect place in front of Wesley's finger painting because, you know, it's, you know, all, all this energy. So actually, so he had um, the people look at the painting and kind of get into it and start moving, doing movement. And um, I actually got uh, some emails afterwards about what different people felt looking at the painting doing this. It's incre absolutely incredible. And I spoke to the person um, right. some two months after. I met him two months afterwards in San Francisco. And he said to me, I had been wanting to do this, uh, this kind of session, but I didn't know like how to do it or how to go about it. But when I saw your brother's work, I immediately knew how. how yeah, to because his it is so filled with movement, you know, and, and I mean, you can't help but go inside your own self. And you know what I find? I've always found in every kind of art, the more personal you are, the more universal it is. Yes. And so I, that's what I love about it. The other, um, there, yes, it's so true. The other thing, um, by the way, 
before he was diagnosed with schizophrenia, did it, because in our family, it for my sister-in-law, it happened around puberty. Is that when it happened for him? Uh, he had his uh, breakdown at, at 15. But 15. thinking back, he already expressed symptoms. I mean, we didn't know as, the, as much younger in grade school even. He has a lot of paranoia. He would say, oh, so-and-so is like, you know, always talking against him or against him, you know, his classmate and stuff like that. And um, one of my cousins in the same class with him, and my, my mom will ask and my cousins say, no, I don't think so. You know, so I, he always had this paranoia. You know, I, I wondered why it was always landscapes, but then I did notice he did one pic, port, kind of like an ancient Chinese kind of a person, like he did uh, one person, I thought, because I was wondering why he didn't want to do anything but landscapes. Ah, okay. But there is one, I think it's a Chinese kind of a figure that he painted. Am I it's the Buddha. Uh, are you seeing from Instagram? Are you seeing this from I'm, Instagram? I'm seeing it on yeah. Instagram. Yeah, that is also kind of like one and only. He, he, uh, the title of this is, is Buddha. Okay. But what I, I saw, you know what I saw? I, 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 I see Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God. Can we ask people what they see? What, what does this look like to people? I mean, I feel like. Is this. Oh my God! You know what it 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 it's kind of like it's yeah. not quite human for me. It's it, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's a little bit yeah. of a like yeah. yeah. And then, but there was a Chinese one too that I saw China. that I thought was really interesting. Um, and I don't quite know where it is, but we have to go through it because it was here. It is. Did he do that? Oh, this one, yes. This is a very early work from 1981 when he was still doing traditional brushstroke, brushstroke uh, technique. So he was drawing figure. He, I, I've never really... This is a, a scan from a photograph because we don't have the actual work. But uh, yes, this is a figure. But right. you know, now, Let me just tell you technique. something. And I want to say something to you about my favorite one. I don't know why this is why my favorite one. I still don't understand it. I don't... I can't figure out why it's my favorite one, but I'll tell you what it does to me. I'm going to just tell you because I know I know what you're doing and I know how you're honoring your brother. What this does for me as a musician is I hear music. It's oh. like there is a kind of synesthetic thing. I have synesthesia. I I could actually compose music to this artwork. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, this is, uh, I'm going to talk to you privately about that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Because it resonates so musically with me. And I have never, I look at art. I'm not an art. I don't know about art. But what I do know is the way I feel. Yes. And, you know, the, the, I know you because we should tell people how we met. We met because Cynthia lives down the street from me yes. and we have a friend in common who's also a, a dancer and an artist as a dancer right yes yeah and so one day i came to cynthia's house and she started to talk about her brother and i lost my mind basically <laughs> i lost my mind okay i have a few more questions plus anybody in the audience if you want to ask anything about wesley Tongson, like i said you know, click on that link in the in the fortune cookie because you'll get all kinds of feelings by looking at um, his website and his Instagram is Wesley Thompson. Okay, now I have a couple more. Um, can you talk about? Is it called King Brushstroke? Q I oh, King Ching, 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 I'm so Ching sorry. Dynasty. I don't know Chinese. Thank you. <laughs> Qing Dynasty Bustro. Yeah, um, he talked about three points that he, why he, he think he was unique that nobody could do. Uh, the number one on the list is Qing Dynasty Bustro. Now that stumped me for a while. That stumped me for a while. Why specifically Qing Dynasty Bustro? And then I learned from a, the museum curator <laughs> after talking to him that I've, I, I realized what it was. It really, 
it was really Chen Dynasty brushstroke. He um, he had two other uh, master painter from the Chen, late Chen Dynasty. He really really respected and learned from, and he he really you know think they are the greatest painters on earth. And you know those brushstrokes is what he aspired to um, to to yeah. learn. And so he said his brushstroke is something uh, you know, specifically Chen Dynasty's brushstroke is, is okay. One so I, I, is a, is a Q always pronounced C H? In, uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. It's, okay. it's Mandarin. Yes, Mandarin. Chinese. Okay, um, almost done. So Chinese brushstroke, the finger painting, the Qing Dynasty. We talked about the splash ink technique. Um, I want to talk about this woman, and I'm not going to pronounce her name right. Madam Gu uh, Gu 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 Yao. She's the a female painter. She's the female painter from. Uh, is she uh, maybe 19th, 19th century, 19th century? Seal carver, female painter, connoisseur, collector. And she came from that family of pedigree. And and she um, she lived in Hong Kong and you couldn't get in, in a lesson. Uh, I could talk about this because you couldn't get, you cannot get a lesson from her because she's like so, so bold. So one of my mother's friends say, oh, maybe after she moved, while you, uh, she is now in Toronto, since you are going there, maybe you can get her to teach Wesley. So it turns out she retired when she moved to Toronto and wasn't teaching. And she would sleep at night and awake in the, she was nocturnal, awake in the morning. But my mother was very, very insistent, even though the son told my mother three times, no, my, my mother no longer teaching. My mother finally convinced him to come to meet her and to show Wesley's portfolio. So basically just knock on the door and still pleading with the son to please, I want to show, you know, my son's portfolio, Wesley was with her. I think my dad too, the three of them. I... And so, and so my, Madame Cool up somehow you know, disturbed her sleep. She came out and came downstairs like what's going on. And she said, okay, I will take a look. And when she looked at Wesley's portfolio, she nailed it by saying, oh, you have been painting for about three years. I think you have some talent, I will teach you. So Wesley was her only student in Toronto. She would get up during the day in particularly to teach her, to teach Wesley. And then Wesley liked her, they got along so well that Wesley requested a second lesson and she was willing to get up another day to teach him. Okay. And she, she spoke with a very heavy um, accent uh, she's from a different province, but Wesley could communicate with her. Yeah. Okay. And you know what I love? And then we're going to, because this is the last five minutes, please last call. If anybody wants to talk to Cynthia or anything, please ask a question or come up. I want to talk about quickly the three things that he talks about in that you tell us about in your blog. We already talked about Picasso's cubism. What about pull distance? Oh, pulling distance. That's Picasso's cubism influence, pulling distance. So, you know, like he, but did he do that with a with a brush or without a brush? No, is what he, I he, he used texture. He used color to pull distance to the three dimensional effect to achieve the three dimensional painting. And the last thing was his Thompson's color, his yes. specific colors. Yes, his Thompson's because, the bright. And colors. when you re, you refer to yourself in the third person like that, Thompson's colors, you know, you really are creating. You're giving birth to something that's outside yourself, but it's coming from within you. It's just beautiful. Look, I am, I think we covered everything I wanted to talk about. Please, please, Cynthia, know how much. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, but I'm going to edit that part out. Um, thank you, audience. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please give her another round of applause for coming here today. Bearing with my late, um, my late show, I, I had a flight. Cynthia, everybody... Please go look at Wesley Tongson's work. And Cynthia, please, you know, keep advocating for your brother because he's somebody that every single person should know about. Thank Everybody. You. Thank, you. Thank you, Cynthia Tongson. Thank you so much for coming.